So good afternoon or good morning, everyone. This is Wes Maggio. Of course, some of you heard that already, but uh, I welcome you uh, to our Intuos 4 for the Holidays Quick Start Guide webinar. Uh, what we've got lined up for you today, again, is some action-packed content, and, and that is first and foremost uh, to get you guys up and running as efficiently as possible right out of the box. So to get started, what I thought I would do is go over, uh, well, basically some of those key features that every Intuos tablet uh, has. So on your screens in front of you, you see the Intuos 4 medium tablet. Now, depending on which tablet you got, it might look slightly different, but for the most part, everything that I'm going to be showing you here today uh, is relevant across the board. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to talk about a couple of the main features here. Now, of course, when you get a tablet, probably the reason, or I should say that the primary reason why one would get a tablet is to take advantage of this pen, and that's the, the pen sitting right here in the center of the tablet. And I like to play with my handy-dandy magnifying glass right here. Uh, to point out a couple of its key features. So the pen, as no surprise, has a pen tip. That's this little thing right over here. That's the part that you actually touch to the tablet to draw, paint, retouch, navigate, all sorts of things. What I'd like you to do for the time being is I'd like you to uh, think about this pen like a mouse for a moment. And I know some people are like, what? Why do I want to do that? That's why I got a tablet. I didn't want to use a mouse. I want to use a pen. Well, I'm going to draw some relationships to the use of a mouse because most of us started using a computer with the mouse in the first place. Uh, so I'm going to hopefully break you from a few bad habits by drawing some comparison here. But the pen tip, if you will, is essentially a left mouse click. So you know when you're using your mouse, you sometimes want to select something, you would click on it with your left mouse button. Uh, if you wanted to open up a folder, you might double click that mouse button to open a folder and so on. Or perhaps click, hold that button down and drag an element around your desktop. You're going to do the same exact things with this pen. Okay, so think about that pen tip as your left mouse click. Now, some people use multi-button mouse, mouses, mice, multi-button mice. Uh, in this case, uh, the Intuos 4 grip pen is essentially just that. You've got your pen tip, we've already talked about that, but then you've got this side switch or duo switch on the side of the pen. This has a forward and a backward position. By default, this forward button, when I say forward, I mean closest to the pen tip, is your right mouse click. The back button, by default, is a double click. Now, these are the defaults. Um, you can use them. That's fine. But later on, I'm going to show you how you can change the functions of those buttons, as well as some other features on the tablet, again, to customize your experience with your tablet and, again, to make you work more efficiently. All right, so that's part of the pen there. I'm going to point out one other thing, and that's this little uh, button right on the back of the pen. If you've ever used a pencil before, I'm being facetious. Of course you have. You've probably flipped it over and erased something on your piece of paper. That's exactly what that little nub is right there. Uh, that is your eraser, and it is pressure sensitive, just like the pen tip, which we'll get into a little bit more uh, in just a few moments. But that's the pen. That's really the primary reason why you want to use a tablet. That pressure sensitive pen is what's going to give you a level of control uh, in your favorite applications that you just can't get with any other method. But let me move right over here. I'm going to point out a couple of other features on our tablet. With Intuos 4, you've got something called Express Keys. Now, at first glance, um, you know, I, 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 I have to admit, I was kind of in the same camp. I thought to myself, well, what, what are these buttons for? Why do I care? I love my keyboard. I use all kinds of keyboard shortcuts and such. And it really doesn't make a big difference to me. Now, that's how I was until I got to using the Express Keys. I got to understanding what it is that they're designed to do. And what they are designed to do is just this. Put your most commonly used keyboard shortcuts and functions up front on the tablet, especially those that require two and three buttons. All you got to do is assign them in the tablet control panel, which we'll look at later, and then with a single click of your finger on one of these express keys, you can perform that function. So within 204, uh, depending on the size tablet you have, you either have six or eight individual express keys that can be assigned custom keyboard shortcuts. So with this medium right here, you see four at the top and then four right down there at the bottom, and then in between those eight, uh, or four and four express keys, those eight express keys, we've got something called a touch ring. Now, if anybody's ever used an iPod or other MP3 type device, you've probably seen something like this before. It's a heat sensitive wheel that with a quick swipe of your finger around this wheel, you can do things such as increase your brush size, zoom in or out of an image, rotate your canvas. Four functions in all can be performed with this particular ring all by accessing them from this little button right here in the center. This is what we call the touch ring toggle. Again, I'm going to be demonstrating these things for you and showing you how to customize them a little bit later on in our webinar. So that's the Intuos 4 pen tablet. I don't want to spend uh, much more time than that. 
Uh, again, really, I just wanted to create kind of a baseline so that everybody understood those key features, the really the, the ways in which we're going to gain a level of, a better level of control in our in our applications. So again, if you've got questions, ask them away in the uh, in the tablet or in the uh, go to webinar control panel, and uh, Joe and I will be answering them throughout our presentation. All right. First and foremost, the the biggest learning curve to using a tablet is understanding how the pen works on the tablet. Now, again, I started talking about using a mouse before, so I'm going to bring that uh, uh, that comparison back for a moment. So, what I've got up on your screen right here is uh, basically the the a reference for how it is that I recommend people set their tablets up for the first time. Uh, when I say first time, those people that aren't necessarily familiar with how a tablet works. Now, when you're using a tablet, it works in what we call absolute mode, meaning the active area on the tablet, that's the uh, this gray box right here, the, the area that we're going to be drawing on, maps proportionally to your display. And to demonstrate that, what I thought I would do is I would bring up our pen right here. So I've got my pen. You can see right there on your screen. And what I've done here is I've put a little red arrow to indicate what my cursor would look like right up there. Okay, you can see it right up there on my screen. Now, if I were to move my pen above the tablet, anywhere around the surface of the tablet, you're going to see that that cursor is going to stick right with me. This is that absolute mode, meaning where I put my pen on the tablet is exactly where my cursor is going to appear. And the reason why this is important is because the first time you pick up a pen, you're probably going to think about using it like a mouse. And you've probably done this before. You've had to pick it up and scoot it along your mouse pad to locate your cursor. Well, if you do that with a pen, you're going to get pretty frustrated because, well, let's just try to do this here. Let's say I wanted to access um, this paintbrush uh, up here in my toolbox uh, within Photoshop. If my pen or my cursor was over here and I started going over here and I picked the pen up and tried to scoot my mouse along or scoot the, scoot the cursor along, you see how it keeps jumping back? Again, the pen, uh, or excuse me, the cursor maps proportionally to the display. So wherever you put your pen on the tablet, is exactly where your cursor is going to appear. Now, uh, in my simulation here, you can see the pen is kind of hovering above the tablet. That's exactly what you want to do. You don't have to touch the pen to the tablet to navigate. Rather, hover above it by about a quarter of an inch, a couple of millimeters there, and you'll start to see that the cursor appears wherever the pen is hovering above the tablet. It takes a little bit getting used to, but what you'll find is that you'll stop looking at your pen, your hand on the tablet, and focusing on that cursor on the screen. You know, if you've ever thought about uh, how it was like uh, the first time you used the mouse, you know, where you picked it up and scooted along, you probably fell off the mouse pad a couple of times. A similar experience might be uh, had here, but again, keep your eyes on the screen, follow the motion of the cursor, and you're going to pick it up really quick. You simply get over that habit of, of picking up and scrolling or scooting, if you will. All right, so, well, what happens when we actually want to start drawing on the tablet? What do we do? Well, we touch the pen to the tablet. So what I've done here is I've dropped my pen down there to the tablet, and what I've got up on the screen, you can see that my, my uh, paintbrush is indicated by that little circle right there. I'm going to go ahead and grab this pen, and I'm just going to gently move it across the tablet, and as I do so, I'm going to press slightly harder, pressing light on the left-hand side, pressing a little bit harder on the right. What happens here is I'm varying the width of my brush and the opacity of my brush simply based on how hard I physically press my pen to the tablet. Now, this is a little simulation right here. I'm going to show you how to do all this when we get into uh, Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. But again, what I wanted you to understand is simply that a pen works a little bit differently than a mouse. It works in that absolute mode versus relative mode like you might experience with a mouse. So once you get over the habit of not picking up and scooting uh, your pen along like you do with your mouse, you're home free. That's the learning curve right there. All right. So again, this is the way I set my tablet up when I'm using, uh, or, or that I recommend people set their tablets up uh, when they're getting used to using it. Now, I'm going to kind of do a little about face right here. This is not how I have my tablet set up. Rather, I have my tablet set up like this on my desk. I have it moved off to the side a little bit. I'm right-handed, so I have it to the right of my keyboard, and I use my keyboard obviously with my left. And uh, so you can see that even though my tablet is in absolute mode, it's a little bit off to the side. It can be a little bit cumbersome here if you're not used to using the tablet that way. Once you get used to it, move it anywhere you want. Move it around the desk. Some people like to set it in their lap, uh, what have you. I just simply want you to get comfortable with it. This is the way I like to use mine once you know, I've got, I had gotten used to uh, how that absolute mode worked. Now I don't care which way it is. I can have it on an angle and it doesn't even bother me anymore. And that'll be you too in a very short amount of time. 
Okay, so that's how you set it up. Well, how exactly do you set it up to use it in your favorite applications? So what I've done here is I've got this, this little blank screen. This is just a reminder for me, actually. Uh, what I was going to do is show you basically brush basics, what I call it, uh, or, or, or tablet basics in Photoshop. I'm actually going to use Photoshop Elements right here today um, because Photoshop Elements comes with the tablet. So just to kind of give everybody sort of a base um, uh, application to work with, we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, everything I'm doing here in Photoshop Elements, you can do in Photoshop as well. And by the way, various versions of these applications uh, too. So uh, if you're not using the same version that I am, not to worry. Uh, most of what I'm going to be doing here, or I should say, well, actually everything that I'm going to be doing here, you can do in just about any version of those applications. All right, so I've tabbed over to Photoshop Elements. What I've got here, let me just maximize uh, my application. Uh, so what I've got is a blank document open. Uh, and I've got a couple layers here, and I'll talk about those in a few moments. But this annotations layer, that's just my way of saying that. Oh, let me, excuse me one second. Let me just uh, modify your recording here. I've got uh, something popped up. Okay, good. Through the interruption there. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I've got a paintbrush selected in Photoshop Elements. And if I hover over it long enough, you'll see a little uh, pop up window there that says brush tool. You can hit the B key on the keyboard as well. And I'm not going to make any adjustments to any of my brushes just yet. All I want to do is simply, uh, you know, I want to say, you know, hello everybody on my document here to see what's going on. All right, now let's explain what's happening here. So what I did was I just, I didn't even, knew what, I didn't even know what brush was selected. I just wanted to start drawing something. So I hovered above the tablet and I just wrote hello there. All right, so what it looks like here is it looks like pressure sensitivity is turned on to adjust the size of the brush. It looks like I have a soft or round edge brush. It's very feathered right there, so it looks very soft. Well, probably not exactly ideal if I did want to draw something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the brush selector in the upper left-hand corner, and I'm going to click on the little down-facing arrow. When I say click, I probably should say tap. That would be a little bit more relevant uh, because that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm tapping with the pen tip which again is just like a left mouse click. And I'm just tapping, holding my pen down on the tablet in the lower right hand corner here, dragging this down so I can see some of my brushes. And let's see here, it's kind of grayed out there. What brush do I have? I have a regular brush tool, okay. Well, I guess it's just gray for some reason, but all right, I'm just gonna grab a, a little bit smaller brush. I've got a 21 pixel brush here. And uh, if I look in the brush preview window right up there, I can see that it still has a feathered edge. Now as I draw on the tablet, you can see there, Pressing very lightly, gradually pressing a little bit harder. You see it's fanning out in width. and also has that soft edge up there. Well, let's go back to your brushes once more. And I'll just select this kind of harder edge brush. This is a 19 pixel uh, hard round brush. Again, if I hover over it long enough, it's going to tell me exactly what that is. Again, in the brush preview window, you can see that it's got this really hard edge right there. And the same exact motion that I just drew here, let's try this. I'm going to press lightly, gradually press a little bit harder. Now, again, if I were to zoom in, we can see the difference there. I've got a soft edge brush, hard edge brush. In both scenarios, I'm using pressure sensitivity to adjust the dynamics of that brush. How the brush is affected on pressure depends on its brush attributes. So let's take a look at a couple things here. I'm going to clear the screen and uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and we'll stick with that 19 pixel uh, hard round brush for a moment. And I want to point your attention right up here, and this is kind of kind of hard to see. It's not very uh, visually apparent, but up on your options bar, when you have your paintbrush tool selected, there's a little down facing arrow. And if I hover over it, I think it should say tablet options. It may or may not, but um, no, it wants to show me what documents there. Okay, well, anyways, right in between your paintbrush and your airbrush, you've got a little down facing arrow. This is where you find your brush tablet options. Now this is specific to Photoshop Elements, and for those that are interested, I'm using Photoshop Elements 10 here. Uh, the version of Photoshop Elements that comes with your tablet is, is version 9. All the same things uh, are in 9 exactly where I'm showing you as well, so not to worry. So what I've done here, or with this particular brush preset, the size of the brush is turned on and set to be affected by pen pressure. In fact, you can see it right here. Check the settings. Uh, the pen pressure on the tablet should control. I don't know how well that reads there, but uh, we'll chat with our friends at Adobe. But basically, you can use pressure to affect the size, opacity, the hue, the amount that a brush will scatter, and roundness, all based on pen pressure. So let's try something here. Um, I've got uh, size turned on, so let's just do this. I press light and gradually press a little bit harder. 
Let's go back up there. Let's go ahead and select opacity and uncheck size and see what happens here. Okay, got a different feeling right there. Note the size of the brush maintains uh, or is consistent across the entire stroke, but it's light on one end, dark on the other. Let's go ahead to hue, and this isn't going to do much because I only have uh, white selected, so let's not even worry about that one. Let's go to scatter. This is kind of interesting. This is going to make kind of a, a, a garbly. Okay, well, it's not. Uh, that's because we needed to actually scatter it a bit. Let's go here. So what I've done here is I've gone over to my brush options, which is immediately to the right of that drop-down menu. And I've dragged the scatter up a little bit. In fact, look in the upper left-hand corner of your displays. You can see right up here, this is what scattering is going to do. And if I go just a little bit, let's say 15% or so, pressing light, gradually pressing a little bit harder, uh, you can see at the very far left of the stroke, uh, they don't scatter very much. On the right, they start to scatter a little bit more. Again, pressure sensitivity is controlling the, the amount of that scatter. So I won't go through all these. I think that um, uh, I think that you guys are getting the picture there. You can do a lot of different things with with pressure sensitivity to create different dynamics. You know, I like to use this particular feature, for example, scattering to you know create borders, things like that. Uh, one of the things I love to do is is uh, make dotted borders, and I do that using the brush uh, or the the brush options right here, and that's by adjusting the spacing. So, for example, again, if you look up there in the, uh, on the left-hand side, you can see that the spacing of my brush is going to be varied as I drag the slider up. So now I've got this kind of little dotted line there. If I want to make that a little bit more, just drag it up a little bit more. And we'll get rid of those strokes there. So, again, what I'm doing here is I'm adjusting the size of the brush. Oh, well, here we go. We'll just do this. Just draw that out there. I'm adjusting the size of the brush. Uh, along with that spacing option so you get this really nice little dotted pattern. Sometimes I like to do make those borders with the dots with the dots as well. For example, I'm holding my shift key down simultaneously while I kind of place these here. Let's go down there. And we got like that. Okay, so now I'm just playing. All right. I'll let you guys play. <laughs> Anyways, so that's really where you're finding your brush options. Once you select your paintbrush within the uh, toolbox Go up to that little down facing arrow, arrow. That's where you're finding your brush tablet options up in the options bar. And then again, you can adjust the dynamics uh, or the, the attributes of those brushes by clicking on the paintbrush icon uh, just to the right of that. Now, um, I'm probably going to pay dearly for this, but I'm going to click on this little link right here where it says brush tablet options. What that's going to do is it's actually going to launch my browser and it's going to go out to the Adobe help file. Um, if you're having some uh, difficulty or, or you'd like to learn a little bit more about what some of these options do, the help file can be immensely beneficial. And like I said, I was probably going to pay dearly for this. What it's doing right now is it's gone online and it's looking for that document. Okay, there it goes. It didn't take too long. There we go. And I'll just minimize this right here. And again, you can see right there, there's a little tutorial as how to set this up. You can set up your brushes just by clicking on Set Up Brushes. This is a dynamic document, so I encourage you to go ahead and check that out. You can click those links right within Photoshop uh, Elements in, in all sorts of different places. All right, so that's kind of brush basics. Um, I just focused on the, uh, the paintbrush right here, but keep this in mind. Your, your eraser, your clone stamp tool, which I think we'll actually take a look at in a moment, uh, your smart brush tool, a lot of these different tools in Photoshop Elements are pressure sensitive, and that's largely based on the relationship uh, that we have with Adobe. We build in this kind of functionality there. All right, tell you what, well, let's look at this. Um, one of the things, um, you know, actually, I wanted to look at this filter first, or not filter, but we, I wanted to look at uh, this particular image. I want to show you how pressure sensitivity, uh, when combined with a layer mask, can give you a level of control that you just can't get in any other way, um, or certainly more, uh, more efficiently and, and more quickly. So what I've got right here, let me back out. Um, I've got a, a very typical problem. If anybody's ever shot a, a photo outdoors or uh, um, an, an image that has very bright, and very dark uh, elements to it, very high contrast kind of images, you might have fight, faced this problem before. What your camera has done is it's exposed for what it can see in the foreground. Um, it, it can only pick one or two things at a time or gradual tones. For example, uh, in this particular case, I exposed properly for the background, for the sky and the, you know, the mountains on the other side of the river. But what happens here is it, it underexposes the foreground. 
Now what I want to do is I want to try to bring some life back into this image and I'm going to do so using a levels adjustment layer. You've got a lot of different adjustment layers in Photoshop Elements and in Photoshop, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on levels and I'm essentially going to lighten up the image by dragging the lightness slider to the left. And then I'm going to grab the midtone or gamma slider here in the bottom uh, in the center just a little bit more. Now I like what's going on in the foreground, uh, but I'm completely blowing out all detail in the background. So that's not going to help us at all. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to use pressure sensitivity and the layer mask that comes with this adjustment. You can see that right over here in the layers panel uh, to combine the best of both of these exposures. Now the way you can start this. Uh, and in this case, it actually works pretty well. The gradient tool is a great place to start. What I've done is I've selected the black and white gradient, and I'm just going to drag right up and down here, say, well, let's go right about the center. And um, well, that doesn't look too good. Let's do it again. I'm dragging a little bit farther down. That's starting to look pretty good there. So let's toggle this visibility on and off. Here's our before, and there's our after. Well, we could probably could do a little bit better. Let's see if we can do this. And we can keep dragging this out till we get just the right amount. Uh, that we want there. We can kind of see kind of a harsh line right there. If I hold down my option or alt key, you can see that little graduate, uh, graduated uh, line or gradient fill there. That looks pretty good, but what I want to do here is I want to use that pressure sensitive paintbrush to combine the best of both of these exposures. So I'm using uh, the paintbrush tool right now, and let's see here if I can see. Uh, let's see here, get my colors up there. There we go. I've, I've lowered the resolution of my display so it shows up a little nicer on your side. Uh, so I just need to see what colors I had selected there. So right now what I have is white in the foreground and I need to go back and get a nice soft edge brush. So I'm going to select, uh, let's see here, I'm going to select these uh, brushes right down here. These are your airbrushes. And by airbrush, uh, this preset basically has a soft round brush with pressure sensitivity turned on to adjust the opacity. Uh, let's see there. And this is, by the way, this is a little tricky thing here. What it does not show you, however, is the actual settings. That's something that's interesting about Photoshop Elements. In Photoshop CS version everything, uh, you can pretty much see these when you go into your brush panel. But right now, when I've clicked on the brush tablet options, even though that particular brush uh, was set so that opacity was going to be affected by pressure sensitivity, it does not show up here. So. Um, you kind of got to just experiment with some of these brushes over here in the brush panel or in the brush picker. And these airbrushes, I can tell you from experience, uh, are pressure sensitive um, in terms of opacity. All right, so let's do this. Let's come back over here. And now I'm going to paint with white. Now I can't even see my colors. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. So this little icon right up here will, will pull up your tools into two rows so that I can have white in the foreground. Okay, that's what I wanted. All right, so now when I'm painting with white, what it's going to do is it's going to reveal that adjustment right up here in there, uh, right up here in the river. When I paint with black and I hit the X key on the keyboard, I can kind of paint that back in. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I can conceal that mask now, or that adjustment. And you know, I think I might be making a liar out of myself because it does not appear that opacity is turned on. So I think that is just size. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and make sure we've got opacity turned on. Yep, that in fact is the case. All right, so I'm going to turn off uh, size. So now just with opacity turned on, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm barely touching my pen and the tablet now because what I want to do is I want to use pressure sensitivity to very subtly apply uh, or mask out, mask out the adjustment so that I can create a little bit more contrast in the image. So I'm basically accentuating some of the shadows that were there in the foreground already. And it's going to look like I'm doing barely anything to the image. But when I turn on the before and after, it'll be a lot more apparent. So let's do just that. Now, if I hold down my option or alt key and I click on the layer mask in the layers panel, what you're going to see is black up on the top. Black is concealing the adjustment, that levels adjustment where we lighten everything up. White is revealing it, and all of these little different blobs and shades of gray were applied based on how hard I physically pressed my pen to the tablet. So pressure sensitivity gave me the ability to really control just where I want that adjustment to be applied. So let's do this. I'm going to hold down the shift key now, and I'm going to click on the visibility icon. That's a little eyeball to the left of the layer. So there's our before, and there's our after. Holding that same shift key down, I'm going to tap on the mask to disable it for a moment. 
and then we'll turn it back on. So again, you can see the before and the after with the mask on and off to see just how much contrast that we created and held back. So again, I'm turning the visibility on and off for a moment so that you can see the entire image in its before and after state. So pressure sensitivity with a layer mask, uh, using your paintbrush, a lot of control right there. That is the basis of a lot of different techniques that you can apply uh, to your images. All right, let's close that up for a moment. I wanted to show you something else that comes along with the tablet, and that's the Nick Color Effects Pro Wacom Edition filters. Uh, if you're not familiar with Nick software, they're a plugin developer, a filter developer uh, that essentially allows you to work more efficiently and create some really dynamic effects and enhancements to your photos. So what I was going to do right here is I was going to show you a couple of them. Well, I was going to show you one. How about that? Uh, so that you can get an idea as to how to apply them. So I've got this image open right here. Let me talk about for, for a moment what it is that... Uh, uh, what I'm going to do to it first. Um, love this photo. This is a photo of my neighbor's daughter. Loved it. Sweet girl Marissa here. I uh, took this kind of in the late setting sun. Uh, the image when I shot it, or the, the, the photo when I shot it, really seemed a lot warmer than what appears on my screen. And I'm using a calibrated display, by the way. Uh, so, so what the camera captured wasn't exactly what I saw. So I want to warm up the image a little bit. I want to create a little bit more vibrance um, in the colors, in the, in the mulch down there in the, in the uh, in the foreground and uh, on her face. You know, that warm setting sun really had a nice glow to it. And I want to bring that back. So I'm going to use one of the filters that you get with Nick ColorFX Pro Wacom Edition. And that is very appropriately named Brilliance and Warmth. Now, the brilliance right now is turned up, or the warmth is turned up all the way. That's obviously not good. I don't want that. So let me zoom in a little bit here. Hit Command or Control Plus. And I'm going to go into full screen right there. And I'm going to drag the warmth slider up just a little bit and the brilliance as well okay so I really like the way that looks but in some areas it actually looks a little too warm and I want to basically hold that back so what I'm going to do is this if you'll notice right down in the lower uh, portion lower right hand portion of your screen there's a little button that says brush now if I clicked OK it would apply this filter to the entire layer what I want to do is I want to apply it simply selectively with the mask so I'm going to click brush and what happens is it duplicates the layer and runs the filter and it puts a layer mask right over the top. In fact, if you notice in the, the name of it right here, it says CEP 3.0 Brilliance Warmth. That's ColorFX Pro Brilliance and Warmth. Now, this little dialog box right here that's just popped up, this is the Nick Selective Palette. And this is essentially uh, a palette that can be used to uh, adjust how the filter is being applied. And if we do this, let's see here. Well, we don't really need that. All we really need to worry about right now is this little tool area. And in this case, let me try to minimize this a little bit here. We'll get this out of the way. So it's pretty straightforward. If you click paint, what's going to happen is as I paint on my image, it's going to brush on that adjustment. Okay. If I click erase, it's going to do just that. It's going to erase the filter right there. If I click fill, what it's going to do is it's going to fill the entire image with that filter. And by the way, if you've been paying attention to the layers panel right up here, by clicking fill, essentially what it does is it's a shortcut to um, so, uh, fill your layer mask with white, essentially revealing everything that's underneath it. All right, but let's do this. I'm going to click clear because uh, clear is going to fill it with black. So now I'll click paint and I'll just brush on only in the areas that I want to warm up uh, on my image. So a little bit on her face, her skin, obviously. Pressing very lightly. You may recall before that we've got that paintbrush selected. Opacity is turned on and being controlled by pen pressure. So again, I'm barely touching my pen to the tablet, pressing very light, pressing a little bit harder in some areas than others. And we'll be able to see that in the mask a little bit later on. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. And I'll move that over there. And I'm going to get a slightly larger brush. To get a larger brush, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to click one of the buttons on my tablet that's right in the center of that ring. That's the touch ring toggle. And I'm going to increase the size of my brush by simply swiping my finger around that ring. And I'm just going to brush a little bit onto the mulch back there to kind of warm it up. And I'll do the same thing in the grass. Barely touching my pen in the tablet. It's just going to give me a really nice, really nice, subtle, soft, feathered effect. Once I'm done, all i got to do is come over to my selective palette, click Apply, and it releases it. We'll go ahead and close up that panel. We don't need that anymore. And now if we look at the, in my layers panel right there, I'm going to turn the visibility off for a moment. That's again clicking that little eyeball. 
There's our before, and there's our after. Okay, very subtle. Here's our before, very uh, uh, blah, 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 <laughs> and after. Uh, if I hold down my Option or Alt key, I'm going to click on the mask so you can see kind of what's going on there. Again, black conceals, white reveals. It's probably whitest right here on our knee. Uh, and then all these different shades of gray where I paint in the background allow me to selectively apply that filter. So the two examples I've showed you right here, I've showed you layer masks that come with all of uh, uh, come with both Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. But now with the Nick Color Effects Pro Wacom Edition filters uh, and through their plugin, you can see it incorporates the same kind of concept, the use of that layer mask, so that you can selectively apply these adjustments only in the areas that you want. All right. Keeping, uh, keeping in time here, I'm kind of moving a little bit faster here. I want to show you just a couple of other tools just to give you some examples here. Uh, to understand where pressure is coming into play. I showed you a paintbrush, basically, just one single brush, um, and essentially the eraser as well, but uh, through the ColorFX Pro uh, plugin. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you the clone stamp tool, because many of you are going to find yourself using this particular tool. Uh, it's a great tool to obviously clone out or get rid of unwanted elements. And in fact, that's what uh, I typically do when I'm working on a portrait. Now, these happen to be my boys right here. This is Miller and Carter, and I'm going to show you how it is that uh, I use the clone stamp tool in a couple different ways to, um, well, basically to enhance a portrait. But keep this in mind. I mean, even though I'm talking about a portrait here, your clone stamp tool is used in all sorts of different uh, uh, applications. All right, so the clone stamp tool looks just like that kind of a rubber stamp, if you will. I like to call it the rubber stamp. And what I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to go back up to my normal blend mode there. I've created a new layer. Because what I want to do is I want to clone to a separate layer, and hopefully uh, this will allow me to do this here. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, depending on the application. I have to be honest with you, I use Photoshop quite a bit. I don't use Photoshop Elements as much. So sometimes I get used to certain tools in one uh, application and forget that they're not in another. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Well, I want to get rid of a couple of things here. Carter's complexion is okay, he's a little bit younger, but there's a couple of freckles that, well, let's just go ahead and get rid of a couple of them there. That one a little right up there. Just a couple that kind of stand out. Same thing with Miller. Let's go ahead and zoom in on his face right here. Just a couple here and there. I don't typically take off freckles, again, because you're, you don't want to take away from uh, someone's personality necessarily. But uh, just a couple of them, I think, right there makes a big difference. You know, my eye's not drawn to it as much. So that does pretty well. I'm going to create another new layer by clicking on the new layer icon right down here in the layers panel. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep with this same tool. And i gotta, I got to give props to, to my good buddy, Tech Man Joe, in the background here. He showed me this a year or two ago, and i got to tell you, I use it all the time now. I call it the makeup brush, but this is a great tool, great technique for minimizing, well, this issue that I'm going to show you right here. And that's these, these big wrinkles underneath people's eyes. Depending on your lighting, and in this case, my lighting happened to be uh, camera right uh, to the right of your, of, of your display, kind of pointing down a little bit, um, depending on the, the position of someone's head or what have you, it'll cast a pretty harsh shadow right there under the eye. Well, I want to I tone that down a bit. So here's how I do that. I've got my clone stamp tool selected. Uh, I'm going to change the blend mode up on the options bar from normal to soft light. And this is very subtle. In fact, sometimes, uh, even though I'm going to be using a pressure sensitive brush, uh, oftentimes what I like to do is I like to lower the uh, opacity a little bit. So I'm going to take the opacity slider down to say, I don't know, just arbitrarily 40% or so. I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt key. I'm going to tap on a nice little lighter patch of skin right underneath his eye. And I'm just going to very gently paint right over there. And just make a couple of passes. Just a little bit. Not a lot. A little bit goes a long way here. Same thing, lower my, lowering my brush size using that touch ring. Uh, I'm going to make a little selection, holding down Option or Alt. I'm tapping right down here underneath his eye. Just a little bit there, a little bit more. There we go. You know, I don't want to get rid of it entirely. I mean, obviously, everybody has wrinkles underneath their eye. But um, what this is doing is it's basically kind of lessening that shadow a bit, and it, it's not so apparent. Same thing over here, just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. And maybe just a little bit right there. There we go. All right, let me zoom back out. Okay, so let's turn that uh, visibility on and off. Here's our before, the entire image. We just got rid of a couple little freckles there, and then we took away that shadow underneath the eye. Very, very subtle, 
And by the way, I did that on a separate layer. If that was too much, if you felt that was too much, all you got to do is lower the opacity of that layer down, and it's going to bring it back. So pressure sensitivity gave me a lot of control right there. I combined it with the clone stamp tool as well as the overall opacity slider right up there on the options bar. So again, you know, we, we talk about using a pen in a lot of cases um, and, and pressure sensitivity in a lot of cases. Really what it's doing is it's giving you a much greater level of control with just about any tool you can imagine in Photoshop, Photoshop Elements. But you know, it's not just about those two particular applications. Again, you can use it in absolutely any application. In fact, if I hide Photoshop Elements altogether, you'll notice, well, here's that help file. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close this up. I'm just going to tap on the little red icon in the upper left-hand corner. That's going to get rid of it right there. Okay, same kind of thing. Here we're in Photoshop. Um, let's bring our palettes back up. I don't need this particular image anymore. Uh, we'll go ahead and hide Photoshop. Tap, holding my pen down, dragging down. We're hiding Photoshop now. There we go. And let's tab over to, well, another application that you have access to uh, when you get a tablet, and that is Sketchbook Express. Now, I, I don't have a poll question, so it's not, uh, not going to be easy for me to ask this particular question, but I was curious to know whether or not uh, anyone has downloaded uh, or accessed any of the free applications that, you're, that are available to you as a registered tablet owner. Uh, if not, I encourage you to do so. Uh, register your tablet and you'll get access to, again, Photoshop Elements, um, Sketchbook Express, which is what I'm using right here. You get uh, Corel uh, Painter Essentials, uh, a Wacom Edition for brushes for Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. You get the Nick Color Effects uh, Pro 3 Wacom Edition. I mean, you get tons of stuff. So if you haven't taken advantage of it, I highly encourage you to do so. But what I want to do right here is I just want to show you one other application. Um, love this application uh, that you have access to, and that's Sketchbook Express. And so if you find yourself uh, wanting to sketch out ideas, you want to let your kids play. It doesn't really matter. This is a great application. Basically, what you see on your screen, I brought out all the tools. I pulled out all the stops so that you can see exactly what you get, and this is everything. And it's not a lot, and that's exactly by design. You've got your tools over here on the left-hand side. Basically, the same kind of tools you probably used in, in grade school, and high school, and college, what have you. Your paintbrush, your airbrush, your, your markers, your smudge tools, erasers. You've got a fill bucket here you can sharpen. That's it. Everything you access is either from this toolbox or from this little panel right down here, this little pot, if you will, right down to the bottom. If I were to tap on this little paintbrush and drag my pen up and kind of around, you'll see this little line appear. Basically, what this application is designed for is pen input. When you get used to where the tools are at, let's say I want to select my airbrush, I just kind of tap and flick out in that direction, and then I've got my airbrush. So now, if I want to select some colors here, let's just go with this um, you know, nice little uh, shade of blue. We'll close that up. I've got my airbrush selected. I'm going to hold the B key down on the keyboard. That's B for brush. Drag up or down. You can see I can adjust my brush size. I'm on layer one right here, and I'm just going to go ahead and throw down some color. And I'm just kind of going back and forth, kind of building up some color there. Let's go with something a little bit darker. There we go. A little bit there. Uh, let's change that color. I'm just going to go with white. We'll get a smaller brush. Maybe add a little highlight on the top of our car here. And kind of pick up on the contour. There we go. Let's, let's grab a pen or a pencil. I've still got white. There we go. I need a bigger brush, though, I think. I'm going to hold down my B key again, getting a slightly larger brush. Ooh, that doesn't look good. I'm hitting undo on my keyboard. By the way, one of my favorite keyboard shortcuts. All right, then here's my eraser. Now we kind of go back and just kind of clean this up. So, again, this is a great application. If you sketch or just kind of pop out little ideas, you want to share this with uh, you know, a colleague or what have you, this is an absolute great application to take advantage of. So I encourage you to take a look at it. Again, it's free to you. All right. Anyways, um, let's see here. In the interest of time, it's about a uh, quarter to the top of the hour or 45 minutes past the hour, however you want to look at it. Let's do this. I'm going to switch gears here. I'm going to go ahead and hide Sketchbook Express. I'm going to go over to the tablet control panel because this is an important area, uh, and I want to spend some time here. This is where you're going to get uh, a whole heck of a lot of functionality out of your tablet. Well, once you've plugged your tablet in, uh, and installed your tablet driver, you have access to this control panel right here. Now, if you've not gone to this area yet, you're doing yourself a significant disservice because when you customize various aspects of your tablet, you're going to find it much more enjoyable. And the best place to start is with the pen. 
So what I've done here is I've got my tablet control panel open. Now, depending on which operating system you're using, you'll find this in different places. I'm using the Mac OS, so where I found it was in the system preferences. Uh, if you're using Windows, you go down to your start menu, you go to your tablet control, or you go to your control panels, you can find it right in there. Uh, there's also a Wacom tablet folder. A couple different places you can find it. Uh, this isn't uh, designed to be a replacement for the user guide, so um, keep that handy if you need to. But anyways, once you've gotten to your tablet control panel, this is what it's going to look like. Well, something like this. So I've got a couple different things going on here. The tablet I'm using today is the Intuos 4 Medium, indicated right up there. Uh, the tools that I'm using, uh, I have the grip pen selected. I've got an accessory pen here, uh, the art pen that I've added. Uh, that's available as an accessory purchase. Uh, I have my, my very affectionately named mouse, uh, or as I like to refer to it, the rodent. Uh, I've renamed that, by the way. If you really like to, you can go ahead and name that. We can just say Wes's pen, for example. There we go. So if you want to do that, uh, you, know, you can have fun that way as well. But you've also got your functions, and your functions are where you're going to find your express keys, those physical buttons on the tablet that we talked about earlier, your touch ring, Display toggle, which we won't be able to get into today, but I will mention it uh, in a moment, and then radio menu. But let's go back over here for a moment. Right below your tools, you have applications. This is a key feature to Intuos for uh, tablet users, or I should say Wacom's professional tablet users, um, or I should say users of Wacom's professional tablets. That's what I should say. <laughs> Anyways, um, with Intuos 4, what you have access to is application-specific settings. For example, I've got Photoshop CS5 that I've added here. So now, when I have my, uh, when I'm in Photoshop CS5, the function of my Express Keys can be entirely different than, say, all other applications. And you just saw that right there; those functions changed. Well, let's think. Uh, let's let's go back for a second. Let's say I wanted to make sure that um, my buttons do something specific in Photoshop Elements. So what I've done is I've clicked on the plus sign to the right hand side of that row and I can see all the applications that I have running. And I'm going to go ahead and click Photoshop Elements, and then I'm going to click OK. And now I've got Photoshop Elements right there. So now I can set up my Express Keys for one thing in Photoshop, something entirely different in Photoshop Elements, or Illustrator, or Word, what have you. It doesn't matter. Any application can be added to this list and customized for your tablet. There you go. All right, so how do you do this? Well, before I get too far into that, let's go back to the pen. I said that's a great place to start, and it is. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, by default, the, the front button, or I should say the, the tip of the pen, is, is a click. This is essentially your left mouse click. But that the button on the side of the pen can be customized for your particular preferences. Well, in this case, by default, I mentioned earlier, the frontmost button is a right click. The back position is a double click. You see that I've added Photoshop as an application that I wish to customize. When I click on that icon, you can see that the front button of my pen is set to a modifier. In this case, in the Mac OS, it's an option uh, key. Or if I were using Windows, it would be Alt. And then the back button is set to a, a keyboard shortcut or a keystroke. And in that case, it's the X key. X in Photoshop will allow you to toggle your foreground and background colors. So how do you set these up? Really simply. I've tapped on the drop-down menu and I came down here and I selected modifier and it's going to show me a list of modifiers that I can select. I had already selected option so I went in and checked that. I click OK. How about the keystroke? Same kind of thing. Instead of modifier I selected keystroke. When I select keystroke I get a dialog box that prompts me to enter the keystroke. Well, let's clear this out. Let's pretend that that wasn't even there. So I'm going to enter the keystroke X on the keyboard and I'm going to tap in the name field and I'm simply going to name this toggle tools or colors. There we go. So now when I'm within Photoshop, all I got to do is hit the front button of that pen and it will toggle my colors. Same kind of thing when we get into functions. Um, for the purposes of this webinar, I'm going to point out a couple of things here and then I'm going to glance over them. You can customize the way your pen reacts to your particular physical pressure that you place on the tablet. But what I encourage you to do, at least for starters, is leave the defaults alone. For most people, they're absolutely fine. For example, um, if you have a, a heavy hand, what I like to call a heavy hand, uh, meaning uh, when you place your pen on the tablet and you're trying to adjust, say, a brush uh, based on how hard you press your pen to the tablet, if it goes to 100% pressure or 100% width pretty quickly, sometimes by moving the tip feel up a little bit 
requires you to push a little bit harder on the tablet and you start to see a, a smoother transition from light to dark. I tell you, again, nine times out of 10, probably even 99 out of 100, uh, what you're gonna find is the default setting is just fine. So I encourage you to kind of get used to that. Tip, double click distance. When you're using your pen and you wanna open up a folder, you double tap on that folder to open it up. Well, when you're double tapping on it, you're essentially tapping on a bullseye. You gotta, kinda gotta wrap your head around this one for a second here, but think of, um, think of a, a, a multi-ring bullseye. Okay, when you double tap, you're essentially tapping within a certain distance. In fact, if we look at this tip double click distance, imagine if these were the, the marks around a bullseye. Okay, by dragging this double click distance up, you're essentially making, uh, making it easier to double tap in a sense uh, because you're making a bigger bullseye. On the downside, however, sometimes you find yourself double tapping when you don't want to. So again, I highly encourage you to just stick with the default and that is with a double click distance right there in the center. Finally, tilt sensitivity. I'm not gonna get into this right now. This, uh, uh, the nice thing about Intuos pens uh, is that they not only react to pressure, but also tilt. And again, in most cases, you're gonna leave this at normal. So we're just gonna glance over that for now. I'm gonna skip over eraser and mapping. It's not important in this particular webinar. I just wanna get you guys up and run out of the box. So I'm gonna move on to the functions. This is where you're gonna find those express keys the touch ring, display toggle, and radio menu. So express keys, physical buttons on the tablet designed to be assigned common keyboard shortcuts, right? We talked about that earlier. Here's how simple it is. It's just like the pen. If I click on Photoshop for a moment, you'll notice that I've got eight individual settings, four at the top, four at the bottom. I've got uh, toggle tools. These are all keystrokes in this case. Key, uh, toggle tools, that's the tab key. Undo, by far my favorite, that's Command Option Z or Control Alt Z. That three keystroke combination will undo. Actually what it does is it steps backwards. But if you keep hitting the button on your tablet that you've assigned to Control Alt Z or Command Option Z, you can step back through multiple history states in Photoshop. So again, what I want you to do is think about what it is that you do most often. That's what you should assign to your express keys. Uh, display toggle here, I'll simply say uh, uh, for the purpose of this webinar that display toggle is a function that's designed for users of dual displays or multiple displays. If that's you, uh, definitely check out one of our more advanced webinars. You can find those on our webinar page and I'll point to that again a little bit later on. Check it out, Wacom 301 for example, uh, will show you how to take advantage of dual displays with this display toggle function. Uh, let's see here. Over to the other side, duplicate layer, creating new layers. These are, again, keyboard shortcuts. Command or Control J to duplicate a layer. New layer is four individual keys. Command, Option, Shift, N, Control, Alt, Shift, N. All I want you to do, again, is think about what it is that you do most often. Set up one key today. Don't set up any more than that and just give that a try. Set up Undo. Do that one for me. Radial menu. Radial menu is a great feature, and I'm going to show you this. Radial menu is basically an extension of Express Keys, except that it's a heads-up display version or an on-screen version. So with this radial menu, once I've selected this particular Express Key, setting it for radial menu, now whenever I press it, the radial menu that I set up in the radial menu tab will appear. And rather than show you here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to Photoshop. Let's do that. Let's, let's do that. I'm going to come over here to Photoshop here. We'll close this up. We don't need that. And we'll go over here. Um, since a lot of you got tablets, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but, uh, but basically what I've got on screen right here is a couple of different tablets in the uh, Intuos family. Uh, we've got the, the small, medium, uh, the Bluetooth version of the medium tablet, the large and extra large right here. But let's do this. Um, wherever my cursor is, and you can see that little uh, kind of in between our, our bug and the tablets right here, wherever my cursor is, when I press the button on my tablet that's set to that radial menu, I'll get this little heads up display. And when I hover my pen above any one of these individual slices, I like to call them, what's gonna happen is when I tap on them, it will perform that particular function. And in this case, let's see here, it's actually in the, I gotta bring up my layers panel for you to see that. Uh, let me reset my workspace. And they're over here. There it is. There we go. So when I, there we go, I gotta be down there. So there's my radial menu, curves, 
and there's my curves dialog box. Okay, so again, basically what I've done here is I've assigned my express keys to individual keyboard shortcuts as well as that radial menu functions so that whenever I press that particular button, I get the radial menu that I've created in this particular tab. How do you set this up? Same exact way. You select any one of these individual slices, you go down here to keystroke, and then you select it, or then you uh, um, apply it. So keystroke, same dialog box, command or control M, and then name it, in this case that's curves, and you're good to go. So uh, last but not least, touch ring. That's the little ring right there in the center of the tablet that uh, I was using to adjust my brush size. The way I did that was by pressing the touch ring toggle button until I got down here to the third function, which is set to brush size. Then simply running my finger around that ring enabled me to adjust the size of my brush. So, so there you have it. Kind of a crash course, if you will, in, in using a Wacom pen tablet, and specifically the Intuos 4 pen tablet. Let me do this for everybody here. Um, I want to go back to our presentation, if you will, something like this. And we're going to go ahead and open up this uh, screen right here. This is the opportunity for you guys to ask questions. Hopefully you've been doing this for a while now. Hopefully you've been asking the questions of Joe, and hopefully he's left a few for me to answer for everybody. But um, uh, while Joe uh, kind of digs a few of those up for me, what I want to do is this. I wanted to thank everybody and point you to a couple of additional resources that you should be familiar with. If you're not already a friend of ours on Facebook, you're on Facebook, go ahead and friend us there. We'd love to keep informed, uh, keep you informed on uh, new stuff that's going on here at Wacom. Uh, the URL is right there on your screen. Same kind of thing at Twitter. We uh, Follow us at Twitter. We post a lot of our uh, new product releases, special offers, and all sorts of stuff right there uh, on our Twitter feed. And in terms of uh, accessing the, the previously recorded webinars that I mentioned earlier, if you go to youtube.com slash Wacom, you'll find uh, by clicking on the playlist, the webinar playlist, videos, webinar playlist, you'll find a number of previously recorded webinars there.